Hey guys, and welcome to the next installment of our math videos. This is Math Plane Geometry. So what that means is we're going to go ahead and start up with angles, and then we'll move into things like triangles, uh, polygons, complex figures, circles, and uh, finally end up at our solids, or three-dimensional shapes. So let's go ahead and get started up with angles. Okay, so when you start to talk about angles, there's a couple things that you want to know. Uh, first things first, a lot of angle problems are going to have parallel or perpendicular lines in them. So in case you don't know, perpendicular lines are those that make a 90 degree angle. So if you go ahead and look at L3 and L4, these guys are perpendicular because they create a 90 degree angle when they touch. Parallel lines like L1 and L2 in the first figure, those are lines that will never touch. If they were on a graph, they have the same exact slope whereas uh, perpendicular lines would have opposite reciprocal slopes. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and look at our first figure to try to figure out a couple of interesting things about angles. So the first thing that you want to know about angles are uh, supplementary angles. So supplementary angles are such that they add up to 180. So for instance, a and B would be supplementary angles on the first figure because, drawing in the circle here, if you added those up together, they just lie on the same line. So they make up a line, which is 180. Okay, next up are vertical angles. So vertical angles lie across from each other, and they share the same vertex with one another. So for instance, A and C would be vertical angles, as would D and B. So I'm going to go ahead and use, let's see, E and G. Just put a little pink spot next to them so that we know that they are vertical. So here we go. Okay, the next thing to know is that when you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, which is just describing what the first figure is, so L1, L2 are parallel. A transversal is any line that cuts through another set of lines. So in this case, let's go ahead and say this is L6. So in teal, L6, that's our transversal. Anytime you have a situation like that, all of the acute angles, those smaller than 90, so let's say B and D, and all the obtuse angles, the ones bigger than 90, A and C, have to be equal to one another. So even though you've got eight angles, eight letters here, and therefore eight angles, there's really only two different angle measurements. And the next thing to know is complementary angles. So complementary angles are angles that add up to 90. So if we look at our second figure with L3 and L4, which are perpendicular lines, if we were to draw a line, any line in between those, these two angles, when you add them up together, would equal 90 degrees. So together they would equal 90 degrees. Um, same basic concept as supplementary angles, you're just dealing with half of the space. Okay, using all those definitions, let's go ahead and try a real life problem. Okay, so here's an example of a problem. Now you'd see this figure and they would say something along the lines of, uh, in the figure below, L1 and L2 are parallel lines. Transversals R and S intersect um, at a point, And all the other angle measurements are labeled. Find the value of X. So we're going to use the same information that we were using before, the same definitions rather. And we're going to try to figure out how to deal with this problem. So first things first, we're looking for x. All right, x itself, um, at the moment, not so easy to find. So let's go ahead and translate some information into different places that we could use. So we know that x and the angle right above it are vertical angles. So we can also label this angle up here x. That angle is helpful because it's closer to the 65, and we can actually use this triangle here. And we'll cover triangles in a second, but we can use some concepts here that we just learned. So we know that we have 65 degrees in the top left of our triangle, and we can actually find our top right of our triangle by using this 100. So we know that, let me go ahead and make this a dotted line, 
we know that we've got 180 degrees in this top line here, which is along L1, and we know that part of it is 100. So, knowing that the whole thing is 180, we can say that this angle here is 80 degrees. And I'll go ahead and write that out. So 180 minus 100 equals 80, and that's how we knew that. And then what we can use is a little piece of information uh, that in any given triangle, all the interior angles have to add up to 180. It's the same number of degrees as add up to a line. So all we'd have to do at this point is say that 180 has to be equal to 80 plus 65 plus x. And then all we have to do from that point is just solve. So if we move 80 and 65 over to the left side, so minus 80, minus 65, then we end up with 35 is equal to x. And since we already know that x is a vertical angle to the original x, then we've already just solved the problem. So 35 degrees would be our answer. Okay, let's say that we saw a problem something like the one at the left, and I'll read out loud what it says just to uh, make sure everyone can see it. So, um, our first angle is 4x plus 36 degrees, then there's 2x degrees, the angle below that is equal to the angle above, so we can actually fill that in and say that's another 2x degrees, and then... Uh, still moving clockwise, we've got 3x plus 20 degrees and then x plus 16 degrees. So we are going to look for, let's say, the smallest angle. So in order to find what the smallest angle is, we are going to have to find what x is equal to. So we're going to use something here. It's pretty much just like supplementary uh, lines. So we're saying, all right, we have all of these different angles. They all are within a circle, which means that if you add them all up, they have to equal 360 degrees. So we could start this out by saying 360 is equal to, and then listing all of the angles. Now looking at, uh, looking at this picture, it looks like this line, I'm going to highlight the ends of it in green, it looks like that is a straight line. But let's say that it said that the figure is not drawn to scale. So we're not exactly sure if that is a straight line or not. So let's go ahead and use the full circle to help us out. So we've got 360 equal to 4x plus 36 degrees plus 2x plus 2x, this is all in degrees, plus 3x plus 20 degrees plus x plus 16 degrees. All right, so first things first, you're going to want to get all the x's together and then get all the numbers together just to make your life a little bit easier. So we've got 4x plus 2x is 6, then 8x plus, you know, using this other 2. And then we have 11 when we add this extra 3, and then 12. So we've got 12x degrees plus, and then we've got 36 plus, let's see, the next one is 20 and then you add your 16 to that. So you've got plus 72 degrees. So then your next step is to take away 72 from both sides. So you're going to take it from both sides here. Um, and then you're going to end up with 288 equals 12x. And then it's just a matter of dividing each side by 12. So then at the end here, you're going to get x is equal to 24 degrees. All right, so this is where asking yourself if you are fully done with the problem really pays off. Because it didn't say what is x, like it does most of the time. It said what is the smallest angle. So in order to find the smallest angle, we're going to have to determine, looking up at this, this picture, is it 2x or is it x plus 16? So knowing that x is 24, if it were 2x, it would be equivalent to 24 plus 24. And if it's x plus 16, then it's 24 plus 16. So um, logically, we know that x plus 16 degrees is our smallest angle. So let's go ahead and fill in and say, okay, 24 plus 16 degrees 
and we get 40 degrees, so 40 degrees is our answer. Okay, so just remember that if angles are on a line, they add up to 180. If they're on a circle, they add up to 360. And if they're across from each other, they're equal. Okay, let's go ahead and use all of that to uh, learn about triangles.